My name is Martin. I work for Pivotal uh, on the Spring Tools team. That's why I'm here. Uh, and I'm uh, here with? Yeah, I'm Rome. I'm Rome Lee. I work for Microsoft. And my team actually working, well, is working on the Java language support for Visual Studio Code. OK, great. And we're here to show you a little bit about um, what's possible today about hacking Spring Boot applications and Java applications using not Eclipse and not IntelliJ, but something something new, something more lightweight, uh, which is Visual Studio Code. And we will talk about and give you a brief introduction about Visual Studio Code in, in a second. But we keep it short because, as usual, we like to, we not like to talk about tools, but we like to show tools in action and do some demo stuff. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions in between. Raise your hand, ask questions in between. Don't wait until the end. Um, so we are happy to answer questions in between. Um, if there are too many questions, we might defer them until the end of the set, uh, session or after the session. We will be here uh, to answer questions at the front of the stage. So feel free to come up. Um, yeah, and I think we are ready to go. Um, oh, one question. Who went to the session that I did with Alex a while ago? A few of you. Oh, OK. So I have to take care to not make the same jokes again. <laughs> Good. <laughs> OK. Cool. Uh, so things might look familiar to you. Just be prepared. But I hope you will enjoy the session too. And uh, uh, feel free to ask questions, right? Um, OK, so let's, let's move on. Um, the usual disclaimer at the beginning, uh, don't, don't trust us and don't take anything for granted or whatever. But the stuff that we're going to show is all open source, right? You can, you can just download and use it. It's all there. The Spring Tool stuff for VS Code got released yesterday. Java tooling is there, so it's all there. Uh, but just to make sure, right, that you don't sue us for anything that we say here. OK. Um, so why Visual Studio Code? You might wonder why we are standing here at, a, let's say, Java conference and talk about something that's called Visual Studio something. Uh, maybe it's not the, the, the first idea that comes to mind when thinking about Java and Spring development. But actually, a while ago, um, there was something, something new coming up at Microsoft, um, which is not really related to Visual Studio at all, to be honest. It's something completely different, completely separate, and built with new technologies under the hood, with new technologies inside. It's a very lightweight editor that runs on your desktop, on your machine. Uh, it's built with web technologies, so it's built with HTML and runs within Electron and things like that. Um, but it's really a very fast and very lightweight editor. The primary focus for that um, is, or was, I think at the beginning, more of the, let's say, web development, working with HTML, CSS, TypeScript as a language, and JavaScript, and supporting that and give you a very lightweight and very fluent and awesome experience. The cool thing for that is the team behind the scenes kind of an interesting additional information, I, I think. Yeah. The team behind the scenes who implemented the first versions of VS Code uh, is the same, or <laughs> many of the people, it's not exactly the same, but many of the people uh, worked on the first versions of Eclipse back in the old days. So people who really know how to build IDEs and that are really familiar with developer tools for, I don't know, building them for 20 or 30 years. So great stuff. Um, so. Why are we choosing that? I think it's a lightweight alternative. And some people prefer lightweight tools. Some people don't like these heavyweight IDEs anymore. And I don't know, downloading hundreds of gigabytes of whatever, installing everything big on your machine, waiting five minutes before everything starts up, uh, and everything is in, in with this one big frame. Some people prefer these lightweight tools. And that's why we take a look at what's possible today in doing VS Code and hacking Spring Boot apps in VS Code. And for that, I think we dive right into the live demo sure. and I head over to, to Rome. Sure. Go ahead. OK. Let's go right into the demo. So this is VS Code. So VS Code itself does not work with Java directly. Uh, but if you're only talking about code editing, that works. But uh, for advanced features, it doesn't have it. So for VS Code, we really actually need some extensions to help us. Uh, these are the extensions we're talking about. So see, you see the white and red, red ones. These are the language generic Java language support. We have the Java language support for, uh, language support for Java. 
we work with Red Hat on this one. This is a language server. And we also have a debugger and test runner for you to work with JUnit test, and also the Maven support. And all the green ones are actually Spring Boot extensions. Then you, uh, by installing the green, the green extensions, you actually got, got to see a lot of Spring framework specific <laughs> info inside Visual Studio Code. So this is the extensions we'll be using. You can either search Java or either search the uh, uh, Spring. In the marketplace of uh, Visual Studio Code, get all of them. Uh, for you to get, uh, for you to easier install all of them, you can just install the extension pack. It has all these inside, or the extension pack of the Spring Boot. These two can get you to install all of them. So these are the extensions we will be using today. And the first demo, we will start with how do you create a project inside Visual Studio Code. So after you install, we, you actually know that um, we have Spring Initializer on the web, right? And this, uh, we actually have a uh, uh, extension version of it. You can click F1 and then trigger the command palette inside Visual Studio Code. And then this command actually help you to create either a Gradle project or a Maven project, okay? So if, if you haven't used VS Code before, don't be surprised. There, there's, no, there's not a lot of UI sugar inside. Mm -hmm. there, there's not big wizards and dialogues showing up and whatever. It's very editor-centric. It's all at your fingertips using key bindings and keyboard shortcuts and commands that you can execute. And you will see it's very, it's very fluent, very elegant, very lightweight, yeah. but no big dialogues showing up, so don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. So let's create a Maven project today. This is a, okay. Let's use Java as our language, fill in some group ID and artifact ID, and then pick the version. And then here, the most important part is decide what kind of dependencies we'll be using in this project. So for demo purpose, I'll be using a web project. You can type web, and it actually searches within all the starters. Let's just use this one, press enter. This one is web uh, dependency is selected. It's the Spring MV MVC dependency, and I can go with that at this time. And it actually prompts you to save your demo somewhere. Let me have this folder created quickly, okay? Then generate the project into this folder. So open it. So in VS Code, it doesn't actually have the pro project concept, right? So uh, you don't need to import project into VS Code. You just open the folder that has the project. That's enough. So you can actually see that the Java language server is already starting, um, and uh, everything is, has been built behind the scene. And one thing we can see that uh, there's, there's his, uh, his uh, palm file. And if you have a second thought on which, what kind of dependencies you will be using, you can just right click here and then add its starters. It, it takes you to this uh, interface again, like I'm gonna use SQL, right? Uh, add a JDBC driver to, the, to access my SQL um, service. And then it actually asks you whether you wanna save your changes. Let's just proceed, okay? And then you can see your dependency actually now has the uh, MySQL connector. Yeah, that's how you can create a uh, Spring Boot project inside VS Code. Uh, and later, I'm going to show you some of the uh, Spring Boot framework features like navigation. And I'm going to use a new project because this is just too simple. I will be using the uh, Pet Clinic, right? The classic example of Spring Boot. We all love the pet cleaning project, right? Yes, right. This project is cloned right from GitHub. It, uh, we didn't make any change. You just open this project by opening the folder. And, and, and um, so the first thing, first important feature that Spring Boot extension brings us is to, for you to navigate through all the symbols in your project. If you press Command and T, you can actually see this is all the symbols in your Spring Boot project, we can do some filtering, right? If we, I'm just interested in the, all the routes inside the project, I can do like this. Here you can see all the root settings inside. If you click on one of them, for example, this one, 
see the root of our uh, website, it takes you to the mapping directly, and you can see the implementation of that. Um, in Spring Boot, you, can, you, you, you might also be interested in see some of the bins, right? Here you can get all the bins here. Let's take a look at this one. For those, for those of you being in the other session, it's, it's exactly the same information that you've seen there in Eclipse, right? Mm -hmm. With these uh, quick navigation to the symbols yeah. that are all being parsed and inferred from your source code. So it's super quick, it gives you a super easy navigation through everything Spring related that's inside of your project. Yes, right. So uh, this is uh, how you can navigate uh, within all the symbols inside your project. And next. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you is that what's cooler is that it actually can show you some live information of the running app. So uh, before that, we, will, we need to run our app. So in VS Code, it's really easy with the help of the Spring Boot dashboard extension. If you install that, you actually see your application here. It's now stopped. Let's right click on that and just start. Now the application is starting and we can bring out the uh, uh, debug console to see all the output. It's still starting. Okay. And as you, as you can see, you really get some kind of, kind of full round trip Java experience mm -hmm. in VS Code. So you can hack on your code, you can start stuff up, you can, I think you can even, even debug, I'm not, not sure if you're coming to debug. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Uh, start up the stuff, you see the output, it's, it's really kind of the, the usual stuff that you do with Java development, mm -hmm. you can do that in VS Code yeah. without really leaving VS Code. Yeah. It's actually started, we can tell from the uh, from log, and let's hide this for a moment. And uh, after the uh, application is started, it can tell from the icon, it turns green now, it's running. And at this time, you can actually see extra info of the running app. Uh, you can see extra code lens for this one, right? The bins are binded. This is the real runtime info of the running app. The bin ID is pat repository, and you can see the process ID also, and all the related type info of the bins. This yeah. is actual, this is actual, you can, you are, for Spring developers, I think you're actually curious about uh, whether the binding is correct right, at runtime, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, th there's a big distinction between the two things that we've shown you, right? One is allow you to give you a quick overview about your project, the symbols. That's your source code. You take a look at your source code. If you have 10 million yeah. beans with the same name defined, we show you 10 million symbols with the same bean name so you can quickly navigate through everything in your source code. But as you might know, Spring Boot does some magic starting up, right? Wiring everything together, taking a look at the class path, finding all the beans for you. Um, so at runtime, something else might happen that you would expect. And you don't, sometimes you don't really know what's going on at runtime. And this, this feature really lays a second dimension on top of your source code, enriching your source code with information from the live running bean app. So that's the real information from the live app Mm -hmm. so it shows you exactly what happens inside of your live running B Spring application. Yeah. Yeah. You can directly see what's going on there, and you can even, even navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, uh, from this one, you can actually see uh, this uh, pad repository is referenced by the pad controller. By click on that, we can jump to the definition of the pad controller directly. And we just mentioned that uh, there's, uh, the, the, these are the one kind of, uh, one sort of um, uh, runtime info, and we actually have the others. On, on top of the root, right, you can actually see the real endpoint of it. Uh, let me find one, um, let me go to the owner controller, okay? Right, this is the local host, and you can click on it, and it would take you right to the website. So it, it, it doesn't only, so the, the stuff that we showed you about the beans, that's just one part of mm -hmm. enriching source code with live information about beans and bean wirings. The next thing is showing you the request mappings that are all live. Yeah. So, and directly in the source code, so you can directly jump to that. No need to open the browser, yeah. type in localhost and 
guess the port or try to look up the port in the console output or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, guess the port and then try to put in the path to your request mapping, whatever, to try it out in the browser. It's just a direct click that shows up as code lens or in the, in the hover, direct mm -hmm. click, right? Yeah. One click, it saves you, maybe it just saves you 20 seconds, but it saves you 20 yeah. seconds every five minutes. Yeah, if you do it every day, day all yeah, week, it's really all handy. month, so mm -hmm. yeah. it's really great. Yeah. I really love that. Mm -hmm. And these are the live information we can, you can see using the Spring Boot application, uh, Spring Boot extensions. And uh, then I will cover some of the generic Java language support part. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And from, from the Spring support side, um, you can see that the Spring support that we released yesterday, you can just already, maybe, I don't know if you mm -hmm. can want to go ahead, but this, the Spring stuff that we released yesterday, the Spring Tools 4, for Eclipse and for VS Code and for Atom, especially the VS Code and Eclipse, it's really up to the same level, right? So all the features that you get in VS Code, you see in Eclipse and vice versa, at least most of them, mm -hmm. especially these new stuff with the symbol navigation, the live information that, that are showing up as code lenses and, and hover information, you get all the same, yeah. right? Which I think is really, yeah. really cool that you can, you can choose. Oh, there's a question, yeah, awesome. Uh, you mean if you can just um, go to the definition of, yeah, of this course. type, for example, for the annotation, whatever. Yeah. Here it is. You just um, click on symbol, and then you can go to the definition of that one. I'm holding the command key, and it actually becomes a, a hyperlink, right? Yeah. And then jump to the definition. It shows the it's, get mapping. And that, that's not Spring specific, that's Java specific, yeah, right? Regular Java tooling for VS Code allows you to browse all yeah. the types and jump to the definitions of other types and even show you stuff in place, I think, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, or you can just hover on that to see the Java docs. This is the generic Java language support. And let's go back to the here. Um, I we just covered some of the language support part. If you're working with typing code inside Visual Studio Code, you've got auto completion. And all the members, you can actually see, see the member list and the docs around it, right? So this is a, um, how you can edit code. Or you, you, might, you might need some of the refactoring features. Like this one, I want to rename it, this owner to a new name. I just press F2, and then I can set a new name to it, like a new owner, right? And then all the references are actually updated. So this is how you can refactor the code. We, we, we also got some other features like the code snippet to help you generate a class and also some um, other refactoring features like you can extract a method uh, by clicking this light bulb. Okay. Yeah, you can extract to a method, things like that. And um, this is how you can use VS Code as a code editor for Java. It actually has a, a complete support regarding the language. Yeah, and, and it does oh, also the, the incremental compilation in the background. So when mm -hmm. you save a file, it compiles a code and stuff like yeah. that for you automatically. So it's really up to the same level of Eclipse, except from it doesn't provide this feature rich kind of, you don't get, at least not yet, you mm -hmm. don't get 100 quick fixes, maybe there are yeah. only 10 and you don't get 50 refactorings, maybe there are only eight mm -hmm. at the moment, but you will get more, more over time, I think. I think he, he was a question? Yeah, question. That was good. Uh, only primarily for code, uh, but having support for Spring is good. My question is, do you know the marketplace pulls the CF plugin so I can actually deploy my code in Spring code directly into my CF uh, R space that's so I can do what I need to do? Uh, yeah, the question is whether there are, whether there is an existing extension for Cloud Foundry, so you can directly deploy, debug, and things like that. Um, no, there is no extension yet, but we are thinking about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you can imagine, since we have this kind of integration in, in Eclipse for, with the boot dashboard, you can directly debug and integrate and so on. So we, we are thinking about that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one item on the, on the long list of interesting things to do. Okay. Uh, oh, I need to come back to the disclaimers thing. Uh, we, we cannot promise anything. <laughs> if you want to... No, no, no concrete... 
it, it would be a great thing, absolutely. It's not nothing that we concretely already work on, but it's, it's a great idea, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I think there was another question then over there, but I, I might, yeah? question is whether we can see the dependencies. You mean the, 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 the libraries on the class path, for example? Yeah. yeah. Um, Want to show that quickly or? Uh, yeah, or we're, 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 we're still working on that, but you can find a, a um, I'm not, okay. You can actually find a project explorer uh, extension inside the uh, uh, marketplace, and that does exactly what you want. You can view all the packages and dependencies in, uh, inside your current project. Like in Eclipse, extracting the, the um, class path container and you see all the libraries. Yeah, yeah there's an extension for that. Yeah. There was another question? If, if you do add a dependency, will it auto-import? Will it auto-what? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, you, you mean without restarting the IDE or mm -hmm. you're running boot application? You're running Oh, the question is if I add a oh. dependency to my project, will it automatically be taken into account with the running boot application or do I have to restart the boot application? You have to restart your boot application is the answer. Um, that's, not, that's not happening automatically. Mm -hmm. There is an extension for Spring Boot, which is called Spring Boot DevTools. And Spring Boot DevTools stuff is kind of whenever you change source code, it restarts stuff under the hood for you. And not really restarting, just restarting the boot part and not the JVM. But that is not taking class path changes into account. Class path changes in terms of new dependencies, new libraries, change li I, changed libraries maybe, nah, I don't think so. But new libraries definitely not. So you have to restart your boot app. Yeah. Um, there was another question, yeah. Oh, the question is, what do I think, how much of the stuff that you use in IntelliJ is covered? The top 50. Uh, we have to talk about that after the session. <laughs> no, I, I, to be honest, I cannot really answer the question. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have no idea, to be honest. I have a, I have a feeling, but we, we should more chat about that at the yeah. end. So it, yeah, well, nothing against IntelliJ or Eclipse, whatever. It's uh, what about linters? Or by linters, are you talking about the check style tool, things like that? Uh huh. You can you can actually search within the uh, uh, um, this one. If you search, if you would like to use check style, there's actually a check style. Um, uh, extension for that, just checks your code for uh, syntax errors, things like that. Yeah, and, and um, to be clear, the VS Code stuff out of the box comes with really awesome TypeScript and JavaScript support out of the box in VS Code, which is, from what I heard from, from people around the globe, for TypeScript, it's the best language support out of the box at all, mm -hmm. by far, and even for JavaScript, it's up to the same level than many other IDEs, if not even better than most of the other IDEs around, around there for JavaScript and TypeScript. It's different for Java, different for other languages, but for JavaScript and TypeScript and these, let's say the, the HTML, CSS, webby things, VS Code is one of the best, I would say. Yeah. Okay, uh, so are we running a little bit out of, the ti out of yeah. time, right? So right. We can save the question later, okay? We will answer every question after the session, I promise. Okay. If that's okay with you? So, yeah. So next thing I'm going to show you how you can debug uh, uh, the Java application inside. Uh, for doing this, uh, you can just right click and pick debug. That's so simple. Just set some breakpoint and your application will launch. It actually takes the uh, same amount of time to start the, the Spring Boot app. It's still loading. And after that, I'll try to access this endpoint and to, to show you what the, what the debug looks like. Still starting. Yeah, it started. Now you can see the live info. And let me try to access that. The breakpoint is hit, right? 
And now you can either hover on the variables to check the value or you can see all of them here. You can expand them. This is just a debugger. Or you can evaluate some of the uh, expressions you're interested in and check all the thread info, the call stack is here. And you can also like pause the thread and do some other operations and all your breakpoints is here. And all the output from the STDL is actually here uh, in, inside the debug console. And um, yeah, that's basically the debugger. You can also like run through it. Yeah. And uh, let's stop that. And also the last thing I want to show you is the test runner. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. JUnit is really important for Java users. And here with the help of the te test runner, Java test runner, you can actually have a, a separate view for the, all the test cases inside your uh, application. And here, uh, here are all the packet, here are all the namespaces, and then you can actually see the test classes, all the test method, and you can click on them and jump right into the definition of these classes. You can either trigger the test here, or you can trigger it on a bigger scope by right click on it, then all the test cases under that node will be run. Let's pick this one. Okay, it shows the progress it's running. If you want to see some runtime log, you can click here. It's, you can actually see the, in the output window it's running. Oh, it's done. And then click on this one. You can actually see the test report. Let me move it in. Yeah. Yeah. All the report for, uh, uh, in, in our case, it's actually all the cases passed, so you, you don't see any error info. This is how you can run the test cases uh, inside Visual Studio Code. Of course, you can debug them and uh, just set a breakpoint and debug the test. Just click this one, and you will get uh, get go into right into the debug session. Yeah. Yeah, as you can see, you get you get pretty much the the basic features all covered, right? You can write Java code more or less up to the same comfort level than in any IDE out there. So with all these content assist and hovers and information and, and smartness that's inside. You can run your apps, you can debug your apps locally in your machine, um, you can set breakpoints, you can inspect the variables and every, everything. Uh, maybe not yet as feature rich as an existing IDE, but I think it becomes a real alternative to, to have a lightweight environment that is able to run Java code mm -hmm. and, and help you develop Java code and even spring stuff. Yeah. So. We're just talking about the feature coverage, right? Uh, you want to know what kind of uh, coverage we have. But uh, I should say that uh, this, is, this project is still evolving. We're working with, very closely with Red Hat to, uh, to bring more features to, the, to VS Code. If you have any questions or have any feature requests, for example, if you feel like some, some kind of refactoring feature is missing, you can just go right into the repository. Um, by click on, it actually takes, takes you to, the, to here. You can find the repository on the web page here on GitHub. Then open some issues and we'll be handling these issues. Right. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, um, to emphasize one of the questions again, VS Code is really a lightweight editor and it's very editor centric. So if you love to work on code and you love to work in these with these kind of keyboard shortcuts inside of the, of the editor window, VS Code is really an awesome alternative to big IDEs. Um, Java support is still evolving. It's, it's up to a good level, but it's still evolving. The stuff that VS Code was built at the beginning for is really kind of the webby stuff, TypeScript, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and things like that. Um, and for that, there, there is no alternative out there that is as fast and as quick and as smart as VS Code at the moment. So it's really, it's really an awesome tool for that. Uh, so if, if you're interested in just give it a code, right? You, uh, give it a try. You can use it for free, I think. You can just download it. Yeah, for free. Uh, even VS Code itself is also open source. So mm -hmm. if you want to take a look and contribute or, have, or hack VS Code yourself and you're familiar with TypeScript, maybe, mm -hmm. then that's a good start. So feel free to do that if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll have a few slides, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> just, 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 just a few slides, how to get started. That's more as a reference for you, so we can put them online. So if you want to, if you try to remember what was this, this extension called, uh, where can I download VS Code, you can download VS Code from there. 
Um, there's a Java extension pack containing these extensions. There is this, the Spring Boot one containing the other extensions, but there's more meant as a reference, right? I don't will read through all these uh, extension listing here. Just for you, uh, I think we'll put up the PDF online somewhere. Mm -hmm. So take a look at Twitter or somewhere or on the website maybe, I don't know. Um, and you, you can see and get that. So you, or you can take pictures, of course, if you want to. Um, okay, so yeah, if you want to ask further questions, we are here, so come up to the stage. We are happy to answer more questions. Thanks for asking questions in between, that was great. And we hope you enjoyed the session and yep. thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming.